Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here from Halet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. Well, from Halet RV, I'm actually at home right now. Um, I was actually out of the office today helping my wife uh, after uh, a small surgery and she came out fine. I'm not looking for any sympathy there or anything, but pardon the plain clothes attire. Um, <laughs> if, you, uh, if you like the, uh, <laughs> the shirt, then you're going to love my sock game. That's some old NES stuff right there. And right now I'm only wearing one sock, but to the point. All of a sudden, I get back um, and I uh, check my phone, and it's just got I got this flood of messages and pictures from people saying, "Oh my God, did you hear that Keystone flooded? What does this mean? I need you. You're in the business. Tell me what's going on." And I was like, "Whoa, whoa what now? The weather's not that bad around here." So I did some more digging, and, and here's what's going on. This is. Very similar to last year when a, a, a terrible thing happened at one of the Forest River plants that happened to build the Vibe product. Unfortunately, it just went up in flames, and thank God nobody was hurt. But um, there's very little understanding. Like, you know how you hear like there's different GM or Ford plants in like different cities that build different things? This industry is not terribly dissimilar. It's like someone said, the Forest River plant burned down. What does that mean? No, not the Forest River plant. Not every Forest River comes out of one building. That's just completely uh, not even close to true. There are multitudes of different facilities that handle production for different brands. Only smaller brands tend to be localized into one little thing. The brands that aren't very large and established over a longer period of time. Um, uh, so Keystone's no different. And what happened here were there were three plants that built some different things in Oregon, West Coast production Keystone stuff that unfortunately found themselves under several feet of water. Super, super unfortunate, very disappointing. I feel badly for anybody that has to clean a mess uh, like that up. Um, in this business, I'm what's called an SOB. Um, <laughs> that means son of the boss, although... <laughs> I'm sure I've been called otherwise, but that's another story. Um, as someone who's very close to the operation of a facility or dealership, it's it's near and dear to my heart. When I see something like that happen, I go, oh my gosh. The, the level of gut check that takes is horrendous. So what does all this mean? So first of all, <clears throat> it's not Keystone flooded. <gasps> we don't have to get into too much of a yank. They have multiple production facilities for West Coast production. Nothing in Northern Indiana, which feeds all of our personal inventory, which feeds most Keystone dealer inventory, including pretty much all the fifth wheels across the nation. None of that was touched. So these were mostly uh, plants that built uh, various travel trailers. And while it kind of sucks for Keystone, they're going to lose some money because of this, because these trailers... They can't just like try to clean them up and slide them through. There's way too much liability. There is way too much in the way of legalities and disclosures and things. Chances are these things are just going to be insurance scrapped. You know, they're going to be inspected. And if there's any level of water effect on these things, they're just probably going to have to be thrown away, unfortunately. That's a bummer. Um, the good news is that because Keystone is huge and because they're so consistent it's not really going to affect anything it's just not really going to hurt anything there will be probably a little bit of an initial delay getting certain things to some west coast dealers there are no doubt a small number of clients who maybe had ordered an rv from a western supplied facility that may have been in active production or built and awaiting shipping right then that unfortunately are going to have to be probably rebuilt. Other than that though, there's plenty of other facilities out there. And again, none of this affects anything built for Eastern RV production, Northern Indiana production, the stuff that feeds Halo RV. But because Keystone's so similar, like if you break it down, if you look at say the build method from a Passport to a Cougar up to a Montana, there's not a lot different between each step. Um, this is 
intentional for a hundred different reasons, but disaster recovery like this is one of those reasons. So um, I, I don't know specifically which brands were affected because in a way it doesn't matter because they're all going to just kind of team together. But let's say for instance, it happened to be uh, a West Coast um, Outback trailer plant or something. I'm just throwing a name out there. Well, there's things like bullets and passports built out West that aren't terribly different. Well, what will happen is a couple little line changes, some things will, will get adjusted, but as needed, they may actually run some of those missing Outback trailers through that, say, bullet or passport production plant. And again, it might mean a slight delay or a longer lead time on some of those offerings, but a year from now, you really won't have even been able to see the effect of any of this on distribution, on dealerships, on fulfillment. It will have equalized out. Um, Keystone's a big company. They'll be able to take care of this. They're, they're going to do their best to make sure that their customers, who are the dealers, and you, our customers and their customers, are not feeling the effect of this. It's what uh, I call uh, the duck in a pond process, where if you see a duck, like, Sometimes sale, people don't realize all the things that go into sales and, and dealerships and service and, and building these things and distribution. And they don't do it because if you're doing it right, they shouldn't. Um, because if you see that duck on top of the pond, she's just gliding smooth as glass, right? Well, underneath the water, those little feet are just churning like crazy. And that's all the work that happens behind the scenes. That's all the stuff that theoretically you folks shouldn't get to see. And that's because you don't know that stuff is probably why I got this flood of requests. People going, tell me it's okay. And it's okay. It's okay, guys. There's no major thing happening here. So relax a little bit. Know that these manufacturers are not pushing stuff like that back out the door. There's just... It takes one case of one person getting sick because they tried to slide something that was wet that had um, hidden mold in the walls and making that person sick. And then a class action lawsuit happens and they lose their hat. It just ain't worth it. They're just not going to do it. It's easier for them to take the hit, rebuild, rechannel their production, and they'll be okay. You'll be okay. Everyone will be okay. This will be okay. Keystone didn't flood. Forest River didn't burn down. Hopefully that makes some sense. It helps kind of put some things into perspective. Um, you know, I feel greatly for those people who are directly affected by this. Uh, you know, the uh, they will try to reposition um, a lot of the workforce. I, I asked uh, some of my Keystone contacts about that. Um, they said, we do our best to try to find new homes for those employees because we don't want them to uh, lose their job because that person has to go get another job. They have to provide for their family. Well, when we get back to reopening production at those facilities after they've been renovated, we don't wanna hire new people. We wanna hire people that know what they're doing. We don't want this to be any more detrimental than it has to be. So it's not that this is a um, zero consequence occurrence, but it is not the big scary thing that on the surface you might think it is because under the surface those little feet have already been a paddling. So again, <laughs> pardon the dress attire, pardon my sock. Uh, <laughs> and no, I'm not going to serenade you with a song. I'm not that good. I haven't really played in about 11 years. Neither, neither here nor there. So um, with that, as always, take care, stay safe, have fun, and stay dry, everyone. Too soon? <laughs>